This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. If you thought the Pixel 6 was a good looking and affordable phone, it seems Google isn't quite done yet. As yes, we have the first renders of the Google Pixel 6a that uh, make a ton of positive sense. Uh, we then have our first scoop of details of what we can expect from Samsung's next generation foldables. And uh, we have even more bits and pieces of what we can expect from that OnePlus 10 Pro. And notice I just say Pro. I'm Jaime Rivera and uh, Mondays and jet lag don't really go together, but to be able to travel again for business is seriously something I shouldn't complain about. This is Pocket Now Daily. The official news today begin with uh, none other than MediaTek. Last week, we were at the MediaTek Summit, as you might have seen on my socials, but uh, we weren't able to make a show due to technical difficulties, if anyone can really buy that excuse. But hey, time off at the beach was great. The thing about it is, uh, for those of you saying that the company doesn't do a flagship, well, you were kind of right, at least before last week, as the company announced two chips that are pretty enticing. One is the world's first four nanometer chip for a smartphone with the Dimensity 9000, and then the Pentonic 2000 is out to actually give you real horsepower on your smart TV. Let's start with the latter, as this new Pentonic 2000 chip is designed on a seven nanometer architecture. I mean, think about it, smart TVs have always been what I'd call as capable, but not really powerful. Now, aside from the crazy spec sheet and the added capabilities, this new processor essentially means that your new TV will run on a more advanced architecture than even current Intel laptops. So I'm obviously pretty excited to see what that means for user experience. Now about that Dimensity 9000, yes, it is the first four nanometer chip on a product ever, but it doesn't stop there. Once you look into the benchmarks, this chip is already making other flagship processors look bad. But then the adoption of LPDDR5X RAM is what uh, has me more enticed. See, usually the bottleneck for high processing tasks like night mode photography on a phone is RAM, so so the idea of going from three seconds to wait just one while capturing more light sounds pretty awesome. Obviously, we will have to wait to report back to you on when we get products. Let's move on to OnePlus and their OnePlus 10 Pro as uh, things keep getting interesting. Today, we have a couple of different reports that show us more detail on the camera capabilities and the design. Now, starting with the latter, we have some new dummies that popped up yesterday that give us a better idea of the footprint, the display, and the fact that the huge camera hump doesn't protrude too much. But speaking of that camera hump, uh, this new report comes from Digital Chat Station where he's giving us information on what we're getting with the module. Now, even though OnePlus claims they're focusing more and more on camera performance, this new report mentions that the 10 Pro won't feature a periscopic zoom camera, and they'll be sticking to standard optical zoom. We currently get up to 3.3x and up to 30x digital. He also mentions that the sensor itself isn't even high resolution, so this hybrid zoom feature might not be too great. The thing about it is, it's important to remember that Oppo was pretty much the first at periscopic zoom lenses, and they decided to ditch it with the Find X3 Pro because according to them, users didn't really use it much. Uh, so uh, let's just see if, uh, well, if it actually means the same thing for OnePlus, if that means a great phone. And also, if you're wondering why we're not getting OnePlus 10 leaks, I'm asking myself the same question. And moving on, let's talk about products I'm really excited about, and that's Samsung's next foldables. Late last week, we got a new report from Korea giving us a few bits and pieces of what we can expect. Apparently, the Z Fold 4 will bring some improved under-display camera technology, but this time, both of the cameras would be under the display, and I'm talking about the selfie cameras, obviously. Uh, we're also getting an improved hinge, which will make the phone lighter, as well as a better water and dust resistant. Of course, we don't expect S Pen support to go anywhere, but another report does claim that we won't won't be getting a slot for it, uh, which is kind of a bummer on a phone this big. And when it comes to the Galaxy Z Flip 4, there's some prototypes in development with a punch hole, and uh, apparently there are others rocking the under-display selfie shooter, as Sammy hasn't really decided which one they're going with so far. Uh, now, we might also be getting a better hinge and better water in this resistance as well. Obviously, we will have to confirm. And oh, that outer display will remain the same, which 
honestly is pretty good so far. Both phones will bring the same battery capacity as their predecessor, but then what's interesting is that apparently both will launch together in the first half of 2022. I know, it's still a long way, but given the fact that it was launched previously on the second half, I mean, we'll see how that goes. And before we get to the hottest news, I know that intro left you intrigued by today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. For anyone that follows me, you'll know that coffee is a very important part of my day, and yet I'm just as picky as I am easily bored by a particular taste. So what if there was a better way to experiment from a curated selection of coffee in a way no supermarket would ever come close to achieving? Trade Coffee connects you to more than 400 of America's top roasters, all handpicked and tasted by their team, and they have a full system to ensure it's coffee you like. Simply take their quiz about how you like your coffee, what you use to make it, what you match it with, and don't worry, the quiz is made for everyone, whether you're new or a total coffee nerd. Your first match is guaranteed. And hey, if you don't like your first bag of coffee, Trade will send you out a different one for free. Then rate in order for Trade to offer more matches for you to repeat. The best thing is you're not just avoiding the grocery store, you're also supporting local roasters. I've been enjoying rock Rocketeer from Atomic Roasters, which uh, brings more of a medium blend that I really like, and the best part is that it comes as a blend from my local Honduras and Guatemala. Follow the first link in the description to give Trade Coffee a try. That even includes your first bag for free. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about Google. I mean, not to say I didn't tell you, but uh, I did say a couple of weeks ago that the Pixel 6a leaks should be here in no time. And well, over the weekend, OnLeaks posted some new images that allegedly belong to this Pixel 6a, and they're pretty much what I speculated it to be. Yes, the overall look is pretty much identical to the regular Pixel 6, but uh, there are some key differences here. First off, it's a bit smaller at 6.2 inches, which is welcomed, while retaining the same thickness. Now, when you turn it around, we get the same camera hump, but with a dual setup that looks smaller than the one you get with the vanilla Pixel 6 model. What's not welcomed is that apparently the headphone jack is now gone, though the rest of the controls and ports remain the same as when compared to the regular Pixel 6 models. Now, what's interesting is that it looks like the fingerprint sensor is also under the display, which is an odd move for an affordable phone. And then when it comes to internals, the report mentions that it may bring up to eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage and running Android 12 with Google's Tensor chip or probably a lighter version of it. Now, on that same course of odd moves, the camera is also set to be of the same 50 megapixels uh, that you get on the Pixel 6. So think about it, smaller phone, no headphone jack, and pretty neat specifications. I mean, is this really a budget phone or is it a smaller Pixel 6? Uh, in today's question, I mean, let us know what would you prefer? Because honestly, I, I would like both. I mean, if I get a smaller Pixel 6 at an affordable price, even more aggressive than the Pixel 6, I mean, that would be pretty awesome. But that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to know your opinion. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on PocketNow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me not complain about business travel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.